Um, so first of all, thank you very, 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 very infinite, very much for uh, volunteering and for giving your time to these kids to do this program because without the adults, they really couldn't do anything. I don't even think they could purchase a kit. So thank you so much for volunteering. I'm sure they will tell you how much it means to you or well to them, you know, because it's fun. You guys have fun, right? You guys like it? Yeah. So you guys want to say something to your coaches maybe? <laughs> yeah, so without you guys, none of this would be possible. So I really just want to emphasize that. And um, we are super, super grateful. Um, so we have more teams. Every year we kind of keep growing. You know, it hasn't been long that Junior FLL has been supported by CVR. So every year's getting there. So it'll be good. Um, so we have a total of 18 teams registered in the Central Valley, which is like five times more than last year, you know. And we have 24 teams pending. So this means that they started the registration process, haven't quite finished it yet, but that's still super exciting. Um, so hopefully we have a lot of teams. Um, to give you a breakdown of the uh, junior FLL registration per area, um, we have a lot of teams in um, Sanger that are pending. And we have a lot of teams that are registered and pending in Fresno. So Sanger and Fresno seem to be our high density junior FL areas. So that'll be super exciting. Um, and then we have a couple of outlying uh, areas that have some junior FL teams too. So hopefully we get to have them at our tournaments. Hopefully it's not too far for them. So. Um, so just to give a general agenda, we estimated kind of big on time. So we might end earlier, I'm hoping, because I don't want to wait till one for lunch, but um, we estimated big just in case. So um, this keynote will end at 9.50-ish. And then um, after that, we're going to talk about the deliverables that are due um, at your expo, basically, which is the show me poster and the model. Um, and those sound super scary, but they are not. They're super easy. People overcomplicate them, but it's super simple. Um, then we'll have a brief programming demonstration with um, the model that's up here. It's going to be super vague. Well, not vague, but it'll be like super introductory. So if you don't know anything about programming, it's really not. If you can drag and drop, you're good. Okay, and then we'll go through um, a, I would call it a mock reviewing session, but really it's just uh, how the reviewing sessions are going to be run and what to expect and how to prepare your kids for them. So um, if we run long on time, we'll end at one. If we don't, we'll end sooner. And I hope that's okay with you guys, because, yeah, okay. I thought that would be the general consensus. Okay, so what is first? So how many of you are new to first? Okay, cool, okay. So for students uh, ages six through 18, it is the hardest fun you'll ever have, okay? And we say this because you put a lot of work into this. You build robots and they become part of your soul. I mean, being an alumni of this program, like, you know, it, it steals part of you, okay? Because it's super frustrating, okay? Sometimes you wanna pull your hair out, Okay, but it's also super fun, super rewarding, super addictive. Like, your kids will be like researching stuff and you're like, go to bed. No, after I finish building this, you know. So it's super fun. Um, for mentors and volunteers and coaches, it's, mo it's the most rewarding adventure you'll ever undertake. So I started mentoring and I can definitely agree to that statement because, you know, there are definitely times where you, again, want to pull your hair out, but then you see, the students putting together concepts that you're like, I did not learn this until college. You know, I didn't learn this until I was an engineer almost. Like, how are you understanding this? And it's really remarkable and amazing. And I don't know, it's, it's a very rewarding experience. And for sponsors, it's the most enlightened investment they can ever make. Because you're basically investing in a better society with kids who are smarter and more technologically advanced and have been exposed to different concepts at a young age and therefore can master them more fully. So, you know, I think it's a great investment. I'm super biased, by the way, but, you know. Um, and then Central Valley Robotics is uh, the organization that runs us, headed by Michael over there. 
he's hiding, and Gary and Thomas and myself, we're all some of the members of CVR. Um, and so, specifically, Central Valley Robotics is a nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing the love of science and technology to students in California's San Joaquin Valley. So, we basically just build robots. You know, we host robotics competitions, we make STEM education accessible to our Central Valley, which is what we need. You know, we have a lot of agricultural stuff, but without technological advancement, we're going to be stuck in a rut. Mm -hmm. So, we make STEM accessible, you know. Um, Central Valley Robotics is a division of the Clovis Unified School District, so we're partnered with them. That doesn't mean that you have to be in Clovis Unified to participate in our tournaments. So, I don't know if any of you guys are not in Clovis Unified. No? We're in Clovis Unified, but our school's in Fresno. Okay, still counts. <laughs> So uh, I, I don't know, but I just want to make that super clear because, you know, I don't want anybody to think that they have to be from Clovis to do this because they really don't. Um, and then with FIRST, we're the affili affiliate partner responsible for overseeing and implementing the, ooh, the junior FLL program in Mono, Madera, Fresno, Kings, Tulare, Inyo, and Kern counties. So we cover all of the Central Valley, basically, from like all of the giant rocks that surround, you know, us, the mountains. Um, that's basically our domain. Okay, so Junior FLL is the first introductory step in the uh, first process. So first is the, you know, organization that does the robotics teams. Junior FLL is one of the programs. And it is for students ages six to nine. Okay, so we're getting them super young, basically. Um, and it is a partnership with LEGO. So everything that you do has to do with LEGOs. LEGO everything, okay? Um, it is non-competitive. Okay, so I'll say that again. It is non-competitive. Everybody's a winner. Everybody gets an award. Oh, do you have a question? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I know about the three competitions. Mm-hmm. Expos, yeah. Um, and the world competition in, in the, uh, St. Louis? St. Louis. Because uh, it says junior. Is, are juniors yes. from there to show their work? Yeah, or so it's. Elimination? I think it's so elimination. Anybody can go. Repeat the question and yes, anybody can go. Oh, okay. So, um, so Junior FLL is very unique in that it's non competitive. So if you want to go to any expo, all you have to do is register and pay the registration fee. So if your team wanted to go to St. Louis, you can. You just register, and then you pay for a flight, get a hotel, go out there. It's super fun. They have great museums. Yeah, so you can go to that. It's, it's, it's fine if you want to. You know. um, and they have like a big expo there. I think it's only like a day, though. But yeah. So yeah, it's open registration. You can go ahead and register for that. Um, so the teams, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't want to, it just happens to relate to competitions. Um, if our team is not complete, let's say in February date, myself, I'm the head coach, and my son won't be able to be there, we're going to be out of the country. Is it allowed, obviously, if the whole team is present building the model and making the show me poster at that specific event? You can't be there as part of the presentation, but my co coach will be, as and my teacher and his teacher will be. Is that okay if more people represent? So, as so the question was, I'm, I'm repeating it for the live stream. Sorry, four out of five. So the question was, is that if the head coach can't be at an event, but the team can, can the team and still? and the other coach, can the team still compete? And the answer is yes, as long as you have a coach that is registered through STIMS and, or TIMS and has cleared the background and has been fingerprinted, then yes. Like the one is okay. I don't have to sign. I could have, the, I could have our teacher, Ms. Malilo, become an honorary coach if you need to. So I remember reading in the literature, it says you have to have two. They like you to have two. You have two, but they like you to have two, and I think you can have multiple coaches on the actual TIMS. Okay. I believe you can add multiples. So they won't, like, not let us in if we only have one. Oh, you should be fine, as long as you have, like, if you have one coach that's registered, and, like, preferably, like, a credentialed teacher, 
because then we know for sure that they've passed a background. Because like we don't want to leave the kids like I'm sure that none of you guys have any priors or anything, but we wouldn't want that to happen, you know. And we have no way of knowing. Like someone could walk up and be like, "Yeah, I'm their dad," and we wouldn't know. So we just want to make sure that we are protecting the kids at all times. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So the teams are composed of two to six kids. So two to six, that's it. Because you guys are a handful. Okay, I'm going to tell you that. You guys are a handful. Um, and that's just so that the kids can like work on stuff and have an even distribution of, uh, you know, labor. Um, so the team's challenge for this year is waste wise, as you guys may know, and it's trash related. And what the teams have to do is they have to pick a topic related to the theme. So this year is trash, basically. OK. And then they have to research it and create a show me poster. And we'll go a little bit more into that later. And then they have to build a model. And so that's kind of an example of a model. Um, and the model has to pertain to what the team researched. And again, we'll go into this more later. And they do all of this led by the junior FLL core values. So again, so the challenge for this year is waste wise. And it is all about waste management, how waste is processed, how it's handled, what happens to this old sweater once I outgrow it and don't need it anymore. Um, and how can I reduce the trash? How can I be more efficient and more eco-friendly? That's basically the whole gist of it. So we want kids to really think critically about how they can make a difference in how their waste is being processed or consumed or handled. Okay, now I mentioned the junior FLO core values. Let's just go through that really quickly for those of you who may not be familiar with them. We are a team. So above all else, we are a team. We work together. We are everything that being a team embodies. We do the work. Our coaches and mentors help us learn, but we find the answers ourselves. So they're like six through nine, okay? We know they're not going to have all the answers. That's where you come in. But you shouldn't be doing it all for them, okay? So we really want to have the students be self-dependent. You know, we want them to go out and try to find the answers on their own. And sometimes you're going to have to nudge them. I like to say that you're, you are like, or well, mentors in general are like bowling with the gutters out, the little gutter rails, OK? So it's not your job to make sure that they get a strike. That's their job. Your job is to make sure they don't get a gutter ball, OK? So if they're going in the wrong direction, you nudge that ball back towards the center. But then it's up to them however many pins they knock over, OK? Um, we share our experiences and discoveries with others. So part of this program is sharing what you learn. Okay, it's part of all of the first programs. Share what you learn, pay it forward. Okay? We want the kids to practice talking to different people, interacting, having presentations, building their speaking spills, skills. Oh, that was ironic. Um, so we really want them to share within the community. We want them to share with your family members, your neighbors, your church groups, their classes, whoever. If you can get someone to be an active audience, share with them. Like if you can hold them captive, an elevator is great for that. You know, just, <laughs> just <laughs> present. <laughs> okay, we are helpful, kind, and show respect when we work, play, and share. We, are, we call this gracious professionalism. So gracious professionalism is a very big concept in FIRST. And it's basically like sportsmanship, but on steroids, okay? So we want, to raise really respectful, positive individuals, OK? And so we instill this right when we first get them in the very first program, OK? And it's basically just if you see someone that's in need, you help them. If you are competing against them, which you don't compete here, but in the other levels you do, you help them because, you know, why not? You want to have a fair competition. Um, and you just go above and beyond to be as helpful, kind, and personable as possible. Okay. We are all winners. So again, Junior FLL is non-competitive. You're going to hear that phrase a lot today. Okay. Everybody's a winner. Okay. We want to celebrate everybody's accomplishments because everybody had to struggle through something. Everybody learned something. Everybody did something that was worth celebrating. So why not celebrate it? Okay. And we have fun. If you're not having fun, why are you doing this? You know? 
It's a fun program. You should be having fun. You should have a big smile on your face. You. <laughs> okay, well, he didn't smile. That's okay. Um, so it should be a fun and light and really just great time. You know, if it's not fun, why are you doing it? All right, so Junior FLL is basically broken into two main components. Three, really, but two that are actual, tangible, physical things. And that is the show me poster and the model. So the show me poster is just a poster board, OK? It includes info about the team, the research project, the model, basically just everything. And the kids usually do this. I mean, if you have a team of all six-year-olds, you're going to have to help them a little bit. But if you have more like nine-year-olds, they can do it. They can do it by themselves, OK? Um, the model is the most popular part of this because uh, the kids, they're Legos, you know, they love to build with Legos. So you really won't struggle with them building the model. You might struggle with this, the show me poster, but it'll, it's fun. It's, it's pretty fun. So um, I have two events that are listed, and the registration fees typically range. Um, I put a range on there because if we have like event sponsorship, I like to put that registration price as low as possible. But sometimes we're not as like lucky with sponsorships and stuff, so then that's where the event fee comes in. Um, so the most it'll be for the season is uh, twenty-five dollars. Um, we have two that are coming up. One is December 12th, and that'll be here. And then the other one is February 27th, and that one is actually at Also Sierra, and that's held concurrently with the Junior F, or no, the FLL, no, the Central California FLL Championship event. Whew, okay. And that's just basically our premier big Mondo event. And then is Pam holding one too, or no? Uh, an expo? Yeah. Sure okay, because she didn't email me back. Okay, there's we probably have, more. There's also the uh, April. April. Yeah. FCOE. There's also the April, there's an FCOE one. So it's hosted by the Fresno County Office of Education, and that will be in April. I'm not sure of the date yet because I don't think they have it finalized. Uh, so, if you know the date, I will pull it up. Okay. So that'll um, be on our page once that gets a little closer. April's pretty far away. It's next year. So, yes. And the junior teams can attend either one. Yeah, they can attend all of them. And the fun thing about Junior FLL is if you can't make these expos, you can hold your own. You can invite other Junior FLL teams to your house, put some snacks out, have them present to each other, bam, expo. Okay? So you can have them go to as many expos as you want. You can have them go every day if you want. You know, I mean, I don't recommend that, but you can do it because this is Junior FLL. And our answer is yes, yes, you can. April 16th. So April 16th is the FCOE uh, Junior FLL event, and that'll be held at Hoover High School. And theirs is usually pretty big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so theirs is usually pretty big. Um, and then registration for this year will be handled on Eventbrite, and the links will be on the Junior FLL portion of the CVR website. I think I'm going over on my keynote. Yes, I am. OK. So um, you know, the links will be there. You should look for them in um, email. So should be, should be good. So what is a Junior FLL Expo? It is a two to four hour event. Um, and it basically just gives students an opportunity to share what they have learned. There's usually like fun activities to keep the teams entertained while the other teams are being reviewed. Uh, it's a non-competitive event and environment because Junior FLL is non-competitive. Everybody's a winner. And every team gets an award. And we try to personalize these because, you know, the kids love that. You know, why not? Why not? Yes, we can. OK, and I have a pretty exciting thing. I think it's exciting. OK, so uh, recently we paired up with um, Bricks for Kids, which some of you might know. They put on robotics classes for um, different students, ages like, I think her base age is six. I know. She, uh, it's first grade through like Oh, so first grade through fourth grade, basically. And it's just like fun camps and classes where you get to play with Legos for the whole time. It's amazing. It's, it's pretty fun, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's really fun. But so we, we partnered with them, and we are having grants. 
Okay, so um, it's going to reduce the cost of participating in Junior FLL <coughs> significantly. Um, so what you get is if you apply for this and you get selected as one of the grant teams, you get a kit, you get a base, and I believe that is it. But that is, oh, did she say more? I don't know. Okay, so um, in addition to the uh, We Do kit and the uh, base plate, you will also get a, uh, a package of assorted um, tech bricks and regular Lego pieces. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say about the grant program, uh, because the, it's now live on our website, so it launched this morning, and uh, it's ready to go for people to sign up, but if you do end up signing up for the grant program, recipients won't be announced until November 9th which is, gives just about a month before the December qualifier. So if you do end up signing up for a grant, I recommend uh, have the team start doing the research portion of it mm -hmm. before the materials are received, because then it helps out with the only having four weeks before the December event. Yeah, plus then you'll get them more focused because if you have like the bricks there, it's really hard to get them to focus on research because then they just want to play with the bricks. But it reduces the cost of participation um, significantly because then all you have to do is pay for the national registration with the first um, program. And then you have to pay for the event registration fee, which hopefully is zero. Hopefully. Okay, so it basically brings it down from about 250 if you would have bought the base model, you know, like the bare bones minimum options, to about $70. That's pretty good, I think. Okay, uh, application info will be sent by email. It is live on our website right now. Um, and if you can spread the word to other junior FLL teams, that would be great. Um, I think we're gonna try to shoot for about 10 grants. So, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So if we've already bought our kit, then it's too late for that for now. Kind of, because you already have a kit. Will that be available next year as well, are you thinking? Yeah, probably, more than likely. Like, I'm gonna say like 99% chances. Will it be advertised early on so that people can... Probably. Honestly, like, I wouldn't want to wait Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is our first year piloting it, so I mean, we'll probably bid it out more, but also these kits are used for classes over the summer and then they have to be inventoried, so it's kind of just like at the mercy of whenever they finish the inventory for the Obviously kits. Yeah. Um, they're used for the Bricks for Kids classes, so for the most part they are intact. We'll also um, be, oh, sorry. Uh, we also plan on uh, receiving the materials back from the December grants um, early enough that we can do another grant cycle for the February event. Mm -hmm. So we should be accepting grants again for February since there's so much lead time in between the two events that we can do it twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's one of the we do kits uh, and, and, like and an assorted set of, of yeah. It does come well, with a motor comes and a with, battery. So the kit itself comes with is it the, like the base kit? I mean, is it the base it kit? Is, it is the base junior FLL education base kit. kit. Okay. Yeah. So it comes with. No, it comes with this box, which includes the little dongle that goes into the laptop. It includes a motor, it includes an ultrasonic sensor, and a tilt sensor. And then it has um, assorted brick pieces. So that's actually the robotics yes. kit. Yes. Oh, well, then it's the robotics so kit. The okay. Okay, so then and this one... it will also include a battery pack and a motor with the, the grant team kits. Yeah, and then it'll include the base plate as well. So, I mean, it has enough stuff that you should be able to do a whole model with it. Yes? I, I have, um, we're new to this, so I have the base kit. Okay. With the motor and the battery. And I've bought a lot of other stuff, but... Junior Robotics, would you recommend having the Junior Robotic Kit with the 
program it on the computer and all that kind of stuff? So I recommend it if your kids are older and need the challenge. However, it's not necessary in any way, shape, or form. You just need a motor and a battery because you don't actually need to program the motor to run. If you hook it up to the battery, it'll go and go and go until the battery dies. Our, our, all of our kids are first, first time, second graders. And uh, I was thinking maybe you know by February, April, moving into that, mm -hmm. unless you think it's necessary. I. I have seen teams do it without having the laptop there, and it's fine. It works. You know, the kids have I to work around it. You get a you get a mix. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but you also get a mix. So like, you get teams that have a laptop and have programmed their model, and then you get teams that have not, and both are successful teams. The teams that usually don't have a laptop usually build more complex stuff because they have more time to do build, you know. So it, it's just uh, whatever is best for your team. I'm not going to give you a concrete answer, but you can do it with what you have, or you can supplement it with the, I don't even know if this has a technical name, the hookup thingy. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No?